one. MDS two. We have ignition. Uh, we have a liftoff. The most distant human-made object, NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft, is in interstellar space, the space between the stars. The Earth may appear enormous and impressive, yet it is simply a speck in the expanse of the universe. Modern technology has allowed us to launch rockets and satellites into space to investigate the vast frontier and learn more about what is beyond Earth. Our insatiable appetite for knowledge keeps us pushing forward, and each breakthrough fuels our anticipation for ever more astonishing discoveries. We have a deep-seated desire to learn all there is to know about the cosmos. The question is, how can we accomplish this? Unfortunately, things haven't always gone smoothly when it comes to processing the data sent to us by the Voyagers. We haven't heard from the Voyager for a few months. Now, after all that time, it's back with an unexpected find. Let's talk more about it in today's video. NASA's Voyager 1 is going into deep space on a dangerous and unknown journey. It is the farthest human-made object from Earth. It's about 14.6 billion miles away, and its sister ship, Voyager 2, are the only ones that have made it out of the solar system and into the space between the stars. When you're that far away, anything can go wrong. Plus, these are old ways of doing things. In the 1970s, the Voyagers went into space, so when Voyager 1 started sending home weird, garbled nonsense instead of telemetry data in May of last year, NASA engineers could have been forgiven for calling it a day and having a drink to celebrate what may have been the most successful space mission ever. But NASA doesn't work that way. Instead, they started working on a way to find out what was wrong with the record-setting spacecraft and fix it from afar. Now, after a few months, they have won. Voyager 1 is back online and talking to Earth perfectly, as if nothing happened. In fact, the problem was easy to fix, or at least as easy as anything can be when there's a 22-hour communication delay in each direction and billions of miles of space in between. NASA's Voyager 1 was launched after Voyager 2, but because it took a faster route, it left the asteroid belt before its twin. On December 15, 1977, it passed Voyager 2 and was no longer in the asteroid belt. In April 1978, when it was about 165 million miles from Jupiter, it began taking pictures of the planet. By January 1979, pictures of Jupiter's atmosphere that were sent back showed that it was more turbulent than when Pioneer flew by in 1973 and 1974. Starting on January 30, 1979, Voyager 1 took a picture every 96 seconds for 100 hours to make a color time-lapse movie that shows Jupiter turning 10 times. On February 10, 1979, the spacecraft entered the system of moons around Jupiter. In early March, it found a thin ring going around Jupiter, less than 19 miles or 30 kilometers thick. At 12.05 Universal Time on March 5, 1979, Voyager 1 came within about 174,000 miles or 280,000 kilometers of Jupiter. After that, it came close to several of Jupiter's moons, including Amalthea, at a distance of 261,100 miles, or 420,200 kilometers. Io, at 13,050 miles, or 21,000 kilometers. Europa, at 45,830 miles, or 733,760 kilometers. Ganymede, at 71,280 miles, or 114,710 kilometers, and Callisto. Images of Io showed a strange yellow, orange, and brown world, with at least eight active volcanoes spewing materials into space. This makes Io one of the most geologically active planets in the solar system, if not the most. Since there are active volcanoes, it's possible that the sulfur and oxygen in Jovian space come from the sulfur dioxide-rich plumes from Io's volcanoes. The spacecraft also found Thebe and Metis, two new moons. After Voyager 1 met Jupiter on April 9, 1979, it made its first course correction to get ready for its meeting with Saturn. A second change made on October 10, 1979, made sure that the spacecraft wouldn't hit Titan, one of Saturn's moons. In November 1979, it flew by the Saturn system again, and it was just as amazing as the first time. Voyager 1 found five new moons, a ring system with thousands of bands, wedge-shaped clouds of tiny particles in the B-ring, scientists called spokes, a new ring, the G-ring, 
and shepherding satellites on either side of the F-ring keeps the rings clear. The spacecraft took pictures of Saturn's moons Titan, Mimas, Enceladus, Tethys, Dione, and Rhea as it flew by. From the information that was coming in, it looked like all of the moons were mostly made of water ice. Titan, which Voyager 1 flew by on November 12, 1979, at 541 Universal Time, was perhaps the most interesting target, 4,000 kilometers. Images showed that the atmosphere was so thick that the surface was completely hidden. The moon's atmosphere is mostly made up of nitrogen, the spacecraft found. At the surface, the pressure was 1.6 atmospheres, and the temperature was negative 292 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 180 degrees Celsius. Based on information about its atmosphere, Titan might be the only other planet in the solar system with liquid on its surface. Also, the fact that nitrogen, methane, and hydrocarbons with more complex structures were found on Titan showed that prebiotic chemical reactions might be possible there. Voyager 1 got as close to Saturn as it could on November 12, 1980, at 2346 Universal Time, when it was about 78,290 miles away, or 126,000 kilometers. After meeting Saturn, Voyager 1 left the solar system at a speed of about 3.5 astronomical units per year. 35 degrees north of the ecliptic plane and in the general direction of the Sun's motion in relation to nearby stars. Because of the specific needs of the Titan flyby, the spacecraft was not sent to Uranus and Neptune. On February 14, 1990, Voyager 1's cameras were pointed backward and took about 60 pictures of the Sun and planets. This was the first portrait of our solar system as seen from outside. When the spacecraft took the pictures, it was about 40 astronomical units from the Sun. The two Voyager spacecraft took a total of 67,000 pictures, and these were the last ones. The crew turned off their cameras to save power and memory for the mission to another star. All the encounters with planets ended in 1989, and the missions of Voyager 1 and 2 became part of the Voyager Interstellar mission, which started on January 1, 1990. The goal of the new mission is to expand NASA's study of the solar system beyond the area around the outer planets, all the way to the edge of the Sun's influence, and maybe even further, interstellar accomplishments. In August 2012, Voyager 1 became the first spacecraft to cross into interstellar space. However, if we define our solar system as the Sun and everything that primarily orbits the Sun, Voyager 1 will remain within the confines of the solar system until it emerges from the Oort cloud in another 14,000 to 28,000 years. What happened to Voyager 1? The 45-year-old spacecraft was flying through space between the stars. It seemed to be working amazingly well and was sending a lot of data back to Earth. But in mid-May, Voyager 1's Attitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS, which keeps its high-gain antenna pointed at Earth, started sending confusing jumbles of data instead of the usual reports about the spacecraft's health and status. From our point of view, it looked like the spacecraft had developed an electronic version of aphasia, a condition that makes it hard to speak clearly. NASA said at the time that the data may look like it was made at random, or that it doesn't show any possible state the AACS could be in. Even more confusing for engineers was the fact that Voyager 1 seemed to be in great shape despite its strange status reports. The ship's radio signal stayed strong and steady, which meant that the antenna was still pointed at Earth and not in the position that the AACS told NASA it was in. In the same way, Voyager 1's science systems kept gathering and sending data as usual, while the AACS was affected by the same strange things. And whatever was wrong with the AACS didn't set off a fault protection system that puts the spacecraft in safe mode when there's a problem. Engineers at NASA were able to figure out what was wrong, and once they knew what was wrong, they could find a way to fix it. The sun's sphere of influence, and maybe even further, the fix. It turned out that the AACS had started sending its telemetry data via an onboard computer that had stopped working years ago. The dead computer corrupted all the outgoing data. All NASA engineers had to do was send the command to the AACS to use the correct computer to send its data home. But there's still a problem. The next challenge will be to figure out exactly what caused the AACS to switch computers in the first place. NASA says the system probably received a faulty command from another onboard computer. While they say it's not a major concern for Voyager 1's well-being right now, the true culprit will need to be found and fixed to prevent future weirdness. 
Voyager 1 lives on. At the moment, Voyager 1 is more than 23.4 billion kilometers, or 14.6 billion miles from Earth, and it is getting farther away most of the time. On NASA's website, you can see how far away the two Voyager spacecraft are and where they are now in space. Voyager 1 has been traveling through interstellar space, far from the Sun's magnetic field, for the past 10 years. The field had shielded the ship from cosmic rays and other forms of radiation from beyond our solar system, just like the Earth's magnetic field shields us from high-energy particles and radiation from the Sun. Cosmic rays are known to mess up electronics here on Earth. When one of these high-speed, high-energy particles hits a computer chip, it can cause small memory errors that add up over time. It's likely that Voyager 1's onboard computers will have the same problem. In a statement from May, Voyager 1 and 2 project manager Suzanne Dodd said, A mystery like this is kind of par for the course at this point in the Voyager mission. Both of the spaceships are almost 45 years old, which is a lot older than what the mission planners expected. We're also in the space between the stars, which has a lot of radiation that has never been visited by a spacecraft. We'll have to wait and see what new dangers and new things Voyager will find on its next journey. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about the incredible journey of Voyager 1? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.